Lots of people are massively concerned about this, saying that actually, you know, it's all very well and good having high levels of immigration and it's all very well and good having you know, diversity champions, etc. But it's not necessarily going that well. When we use tick boxes, it won't go well. Um, diversity is something that must be embraced. I mean, I'm Jamaican Indian, and there are many people in Jamaican from Jamaica from various backgrounds, but they see themselves as Jamaicans. They don't wear any other label. The thing about it is here, number one, we've been burying our head in the sand for far too long to say that we've got a race problem. And now we've got interracial issues as well. We haven't got the traditional race issues anymore between black and white or black and brown skinned people. We've got that within the actual minority communities now as well. And that's simply because we've never embraced our diversity and we've never really wanted to understand the cultural differences. And remember, we have a load of a load of characteristics in common, but we never seem to share that. We always share the divisiveness that exists between us. We actually, I mean, every single time you turn your television on and there's an advert now, there's this remarkably modern family where it looks like everybody's from uh, different continents, they're all living under the same roof, all of this stuff. You can't move for things like that. And I mean, culturally, for example, as well, the Black Lives Matter movement, I mean, there were people from all different colours, creeds and religions who were taking part in that. And you can't move these days for things like diversity champions at taxpayers' expense in the NHS. I mean, at what point does it become on people of a different culture or creed or religion or whatever to actually maybe do more to integrate? When we talk about integration, remember, we've got pocket communities. I remember um, Judge Ray Singh in 2003 gave a report to Birmingham, for example, talking about the divisiveness of having pocket communities and not embracing that diversity. Diversity champions are one thing. What we've got to do is deal with this at grassroots level levels and get it right across the board. And that's the issue. And the key element is as well, discrimination still exists in this country and we're burying our head in the sand as a result of it. So what we like to do in this country, in my view, is to do what I call Kodak moments with diversity, have buzzwords, but are we really embracing the cultural diversity of the varying people that, that live in the UK? And th here's the question. What identity do many people wear? Do they wear the fact that they're British or do they um, wear the fact that they are, for example, Muslim, Pakistani origin, Hindu, Indian, or even myself? Do I bear the fact that, you know, my parents are from Jamaica? That cultural diversity has never been embraced. And it's time now that we start making inroads on that, because that's the only way we're going to deal with com um, community conflict. But what if they don't really want to? I mean, I used to do quite a bit of community work around the Rush Home area in Manchester, just teaching kids how to read and stuff. And I was absolutely staggered at the amount of children who've been born here and whose parents have been born here who didn't really have a grasp of the English language, actually, because they never spoke it at home or they never spoke, it, it, it would appear, really, in their own community. I mean, where's the kind of prejudice or oppression when it comes to people, frankly, not necessarily, not necessarily in some cases, really, really wanting to be part of the country that they live in? And what can we do to combat that? You have just hit the nail on the head. The facts are what we need to do is start this from school. And when I went to school, and I'm, I'm first born here from the Windrush generation, and the importance is I didn't see that um, religious or that colour difference. We just had mates because we all talked to each other, we played out with each other, and that's the important thing is to start that education within the schools, but also as well getting people to understand who's whom and actually getting people to understand the cultural differences but also at the same time, understand who we are and we're all one and we're all God's children. That's how I see it. As a bishop, we're all God's children and that's the first and foremost thing. But we wear other labels instead. And in today's society, having a label is far more important than being a human being, in my view. I, I think that's absolutely spot on. In fact, everybody's got to be in some kind of little pigeonhole or if you want to call it some kind of social tribe. Otherwise, they don't feel like they fit in. I'm very fearful about the future generations coming up now. They've all got to be in a particular thing, whether it's a trans community or whether it's this, that or the other. You know, they've all got to have an identity other than their own, actually, at the minute, as far as I can see. But as a religious man yourself, I'm keen to get your take as a final question on 
how difficult it might be to combat certain religious elements. And by that I mean, if people do feel as though they're serving a higher power, for example, that, let's be honest, say Allah has been offended by either a teacher in Batley Grammar School or something like that, and they are then going to kind of try to voice how distasteful, displeased they are about that, then there's very little respect shown towards maybe police officers in this country because they're going to try and serve a higher power, if that makes sense. How do we kind of deal with that and respect the laws in this country at the same time as respecting their religious views? The facts are, at the end of the day, one of the things is we're too politically correct. And the facts are, I see that we all worship one God, and that's it, as far as I am concerned. And I, I, I mean, I've been into mosques, and I've talked about my faith being a Christian, and Muslims talk to me openly about their faith, and somewhere we'll meet in the middle. And the thing is, people are fearful of having those all-important conversations. Until you have that all-important dialogue, we'll never bridge that gap. And that's why we have so much distrust in our society, because we're failing to embrace the diversity. And one thing I'll always say is this, and I always say this, and I'm blunt with it, Partaking in food from other nationalities does not make you embrace diversity. It's embracing <laughs> the humanity that exists within each, each and every one of us. And that's how we're going to bring the change and have those all important and blunt conversations as well.